The world of American angler You're up with the sun With a fish on your line Your day's just begun The world of American And on streams Now you're living the good life Catch the one of your dreams Hi, I'm Pat Trainer. and welcome to the American Angler. Today we're coming to you from one of my all-time favorite lakes, Lake Mead in Nevada. And our guest for you today is a gentleman that on this lake, this time of the year, with a bait and a particular technique, is almost unbeatable. The gentleman's name is Jim Jarrett. Jim, great to have you on the show. Glad to be here. You know, as I said, this is one of my favorite lakes and I've always fished it in the summertime. We're gonna be doing a technique that I like to do, but I've never done it here and I've really been looking forward to fishing with you. You ready to go get them? I'm ready, let's go. And you stay with us. We'll be right back with some exciting fishing from Lake Mead. What brought you to this part of the country, Jim? You, you moved from California over here. Well, Did you just like this area? Or? The uh, Southern California lake congestion. I, when I lived in Southern California, I didn't want to wait in line to go fishing. So I'd rather drive six hours and have a lake all to myself. I started that in 1964. And I would come to Mead and Mojave we eventually got us a mobile home up at Mojave, and that would be our base for vacation, spent most of our vacations up here. And the great fishery that it used to be, and sometimes still is. This lake can sure be temperamental. Oh boy. It's probably the most temperamental lake I've ever fished in my life. For being able to go to an area one day and do really well, and come back the next and you can't buy a strike. That's right. These fish must move a lot in this area. Uh, Mike Folkstad made a comment about Mojave that I apply to this lake. Uh, years ago, he was talking to someone else and I overheard him. He said these, the fish are like nomads on Mojave. Well, I think they're related on these two lakes. You think maybe they travel with the bait a lot in this lake? They do. That was the only thing that I could ever think of that would make those fish move because the structure yeah, it's, it has its, its own peculiarities, different areas, but basically they've got the same thing to look at any place they go in this lake. Yes. The bait, as a matter of fact, yesterday I, uh, there was some boils where I was fishing, and in the same area, back in this, these salt cedar. There we go. go. Yeah. Hey. Nice fish. Oh, he, no, no, he's Oh, there. that was your pork. A brown rubber and purple pork. Don't we love it? No, I saw that that piece oh. come out of it. Oh, did it fall off? Something boy, fell off. Boy, he's a scrappy little dude he for is a, a keeper, scrappy isn't little he? Good. Those that guys a, didn't. Boy, well, can you see them in this clear water yeah, or that, what? That is awesome. I love it. Look at well, that. Have you ever caught a four pounder in this kind of oh, stuff? Oh yeah. There he is. That is a nice keeper fish. Yeah, a nice fish. Pretty fish. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, he did shed your pork. That was a little surprising after after those people were here all that time. He was just moved down a little ways. That fish has got a tag in him. This is a good message to put out to the people, uh, the the your viewing public. Anytime you catch a anytime you catch a tagged fish, to take this down and mail it in to whichever. Uh, in our case, it's Nevada Department of Wildlife. That, well, in a lot of cases, they want you to measure these fish when you catch them tagged and kind of keep in mind where you've caught them. And sometimes that information helps them track these That's fish. That's a good idea. We can measure. I have my Willie uh -huh. Go board. We will measure this fish. Beautiful, nice fish. Let's measure him up. See if he's grown a little since they've tagged him. And we'll get him back in before we run him out of air here. He is a 15 inch fish. 15 inches. Probably a nice two pound fish, maybe. Uh -huh. Nice fish. Okay. Now. We lay him back in here and tell him we love him and see you later. Bye bye. Very good. That's number 03086. That's him. We'll always hope, know that fish. Hope to see you later. 
Okay, what are we going to be fishing here, Jim? Okay, we're going to fish this rock reef that it's about a four or five foot ledge, just as you see above the water. It leads out about. You can kind of follow that blonde spot out that's there. That's exactly that right. Reef, yeah. Cast your bait right on top of the, the light water and pull it right down. Let it fall. Are you gonna? And there'll be. You gonna uh, let me right uh, use a piece of this? famous pork of yours? Are I you wish gonna... you would. <laughs> Sometimes. This is, this is quite an array of pork you got here. It really is. I've never seen anything like this. Well, this is my dish pan and it's quite functional. This I keep my pork in four different jars for four different colors. I soak my pork. Uncle Josh, number 11 purple is what I fish eight months out of the year. Uh -huh. And brown rubber and purple pork. I keep it in this container here and I change it often. The reason I change it often is I like to say the fish savor the flavor. If you're not fishing with flavor, then you're not fishing as productively as, as you can fish. Well, now you're pretty well known for this pork, but now you've got your own formula in this stuff, right? I, I call it the solution. The it, solution. It's been my solution to success, yes. Well, it's made formula. you a lot of money. I know that. It really has, and, and hopefully it'll make me some more. Well, I'm going to try one of these myself. And I'm going to use a little bit different color jig, and we'll just see. You what can't happens. beat purple. I read something that Doug Hannon said uh, in Bassmaster Tactics and Techniques. People uh, have said to me, why, do, why purple? And I never really had an answer until I read Bassmaster Tactics and Techniques. And uh, it's a kind of a quote from the book that Doug Hannon said uh, about a one sentence quote that. Uh, purple may be fluorescent to bass. In other words, it may show up better in the water. They than, may see it a little they better. They may see it better. And so I thought that was pretty good, so I kind of believe it. There's some reason that I, I oh. Did you get banged? <laughs> Just as I reeled in, I'm, there may be a limb. Or, hmm. But um, there's some reason they eat purple and you catch bigger fish with purple baits. Well, you know, a lot of people don't relate purple to water that's this clear. I mean, it, it has over the years, and what I've experienced, a lot of people will go to these bright colors in real stained water, but they shy away from them in real clear water. So this kind of goes to the opposite it, of what I've heard over so many years of fishing. It is the opposite. It's, uh, it's what I've learned. I'm a clear water fisherman. This is where I learned to fish, and, and uh, I learned, well, actually, the first, uh, experience I had with purple was with the old western bass, Mike Folkstad, Larry Hoppers, and so on on Mojave fish purple worms. We should get bit down this bank here. There's one. This is the right kind of rock. You got him already? There he is. It's coming up. Oh, that's a good fish. All right. Oh, nice, nice fish. fish. All right. All right. I'll tell you, you catch some almost two pounders, that may be a two. You catch those in the tournament and you're going to be in the top five. He's got a little spots on his tail left from the spawn. Left from the spawn, yeah. 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 All healing up though. Yeah. He's in good shape. He's healthy. No hook, no no hook marks in his lip. Yeah, that fish hadn't been caught before. No, not at all. There he goes. I like to be gentle. I I tell him I love him, you know. I do. We got to put all those fish back, not not put them in the live well, or we won't have them for our grandkids. Well, we did that so quick, we might get another one down well, this bank. You kind of call that shot. Sometimes oh, wow. you get lucky. Those fish are coming fairly shallow. Fairly shallow. That uh, both fish probably five feet deep. You got these blonde rocks, little dark spots, grass, these salt cedars. That's a lot of places they can be. Exactly. The second thing that you said there, the little dark spots, uh -huh. is how I've caught a lot of fish. Just a dark spot. Whatever I see that's dark. Right there where I cast, there's no dark water at all. So I just made a, a random cast. But, and again, I won't hardly fish a point like this that I don't see much dark stuff on. Uh -huh. Now, as we get closer, there may be a bush or two, but you go for those dark spots. It can be grass that's dark, it can be a bush that's dark, or it can be a rock ledge that's dark. Mm -hmm. And those fish are going to live in that house. Let's don't fish this here. There's a fish. I guess we ought to fish I this I guess we here. ought to fish this a minute, <laughs> hadn't we? 
Oh, look well, at him I down there. Well, I said we might get another. There he's got a nice fish. Oh, that's fish. another nice yeah. fish. Look at him go. I guess oh, that's the best uh, fish of the day right there. It is the best of the day. All right. Isn't that nice? Look at that purple pork hanging out of his mouth. Well, he jumped right on it so he got in there. That is the nicest fish of the day. Oh, look at his. He's deformed. He's been hit with a prop or something. Yeah. You see that, Pat? Uh-huh. We call him Mr. Hump. He's hmm. got that spawning tail, too. He's had a good spawn. Now, you probably never fish with me in a tournament, but you want a guy to get excited at, at uh, 9, 15 in the morning and have about six plus pounds of fish in the oh, live yeah. well. On this lake. That's a nice fish. Look how bloody his tail is from, from the spawn there. Right. These fish probably haven't been okay. off of the beds See, very long. No, not at all. He, right at, he was on the ledge. Remember, we were just talking about the dark, uh -huh. dark spot in the ledge. Not too shabby. <clears throat> we also mentioned, uh, like, it can be tough. We were saying something back there about, you know, not getting bit and so on. That's how fast your fortunes change bass fishing. Just, Just two takes fish, one boom. cast. Yeah, one cast. Hey, the fish aren't done and neither are we. We'll be right back after this commercial break. You notice that each one of those fish that I've caught, even the dink that I lost, with four, four bites so far, all those bites have been within five minutes or thereabouts of changing baits and putting new flavor on. Now, that may be hard to prove today, but I have fished with the likes of Rich Tauber, excellent fisherman, Kerry Sirklu, and I caught more fish than they did. And by the end of the day, and they will tell you, they've told friends that have told me, that the solution and the flavor made the difference. Mm -hmm. They wish they'd have started switching baits uh, sooner themselves. It's a it's a reality. They the fish like that flavor. So you you wash it off in five to ten minutes and then you want to change baits. I think I'll just give them a fresh give them a new new piece of pork. A new flavor, a fresh flavor to savor. There's a little method to changing pork. Uncle Josh pork, this is number eleven, Uncle Josh you hold it like this and it has a slit in it you hold it like this and turn your jig sideways to the pork and go back down through pushing backwards on the jig now it won't come out every time but it will come out a large percentage of the time you can save your baits put the bait back in then put a new one on find that little slit kind of separate it with your hook point first then feel with your finger here when you're hooked don't try to force it through the skin. If you try to force it through the skin, you'll, you'll bend your hook trying to get it in. Then you can't get it off as well. Get this tail just stretched out here and it gets a little more wiggle that way. I take the pork and smear it on my rubber and I'll even take it up there like that right there and get a little on the line and it just puts more flavor out and the fish will just kind of follow that trail right down and eat it. You're using a light wire hook on your jig, right? It's a Eagle uh, th Mustad 32760. Uh huh. 5.0. Ted Miller likes it for the penetration um, over the heavy hooks, and obviously I like it for that reason as well. Now you mentioned that you you can catch fish on this lake, probably you, I think you said eight months out of the year. Eight, actually eight months, and you can catch them the other four but if you want to win the tournament you, you don't can want. you don't want to fish pork it's one fish two fish or three fish a day through the summer you can do that faithfully i've never been able to put a limit together uh -huh. and it's a very so you, you, unusual fact what i consider to be a fact you lay this down then about june mid june the, i go to the end of june July, yeah. August, September, you got a half a month there, October partially and, and mid-June probably. Uh -huh. Then you go to surface and plastic. It's been a frustrating thing for me, Pat. Five Septembers, it only took me five years 
At five <laughs> Septembers in a row, I bombed out. Now again, catching one, two, three fish, not making any any points for the fish off or anything. So I finally got tired of bombing out and, and changed your and, ways and huh? changed my ways. I just, you know, what, that almost doesn't make sense, but I have a theory. It, it's may or may not be that there's a certain one that pre-spawn, winter months, and post-spawn, I believe that the fish crave calcium, which is in shad too, but what's a crawdad made out of, mm -hmm. a bone. And there's something about mother nature that tells them to eat crawdads. Then in the summer months, it's not a, a uh, physical need for them. And it's it maybe like a, a woman likes dill pickle sort of thing, you know, mm -hmm. they, that deal. That may be way out, but it's there's some reason, and I, I'm not sure what it is. Look at this tumbleweed. How come we didn't catch a fish right there? Because you haven't thrown in there yet. I did once, but did maybe, you? maybe not good enough. And he said, there he is. There he is. You got him. Yeah. Come on on out. Little guy. Yeah, little guy. He might but a nice keep. little guy. He might keep. I believe no. he will. Oh, maybe. Well, we'll he's see. He's long. Yeah, he's long, but he's Lake Mead skinny. He's a little feller. I think he's probably 12, 12 and a half. Got to be 13, right? 13. For a while, we had a 12 inch. I think some one state changed their, their uh, law. Now it's all 13. Well, you you mentioned a minute ago that one of the ingredients you used a lot in in your brine solution or in this solution was salt. Mm-hmm. Are you going to share the other two, or are you going to keep this a secret? <laughs> well, you know, I must keep it a secret since I do sell it. Um, this is the Jim Jared secret formula. It, that's it. It is, and the name. I think I may admit it is the solution. Is the name of it? There he is. Got him. Yep. Yeah. This better fish, good fish. Yeah, a little better. Well, he's getting weak on me. <laughs> he's a keeper. Look at him go. He's a nice fish, about a pound and a half. Well, I haven't seen him yet. There he Coming is. up back by the boat. There's, oh, yeah. that's close to two pounder. Yeah. Over two pounder, nice maybe. Fish, huh? Well, right. how about that? The key to successful bass fishing is the number of proper presentations you make in a day. Now this is a seminar speech I give. Okay, the number of proper presentations may be a worm doodle 40 feet deep. It's up to you to figure out what. But the the number you make, yeah. the number. If you it's if you make a numbers a, game. nice fish, I like you. Look, no hook marks. I like that too. That's your limit. You're Have done. Have a good day. That yeah, that's the limit. It's my turn. You let your bait fall. With, with a bow in the line. Now that can't be picked up on camera, probably. But many people will keep that, the bait falling with the line straight and that causes the bait to fall toward the boat. You want a straight fall. Bass prefer a straight fall in order to get a straight fall. The other thing that you accomplish with the bow in the line, quite literally it allows the fish room to suck in the bait. Mm -hmm. If you have a tight line and the fish isn't real aggressive, he sucks on it and you're pulling against it, it doesn't go in the way it should. So maybe he's got the tail of your, your bait when you set the hook. Mm -hmm. So with that bow in your line, you, you do two things. You get a straight fall and you get the fish to inhale the bait totally. This point is basically the same as we just caught those over there. This is just identical. Very and I, same kind of stuff. I just cast in a little dark spot right there. And there he is. All right. Oh, that's a Ooh, good that's one. A, that's Pat. a big fish. That's a big fish. He there's just, a three pound there's plus a three fish. Pound plus fish. Who? Come on, baby. Oh, he ate that jig, didn't he? I'm just gonna lip him here, rather than. Well, look at this. He's there's a there's what you look for. Look how skinny. Yeah. But he's got that big head. Almost he, looks like a cormorant or something. Looks like a cormorant and maybe grabbed him when he was younger. Yeah. There's a three pounder. Yep. Uh, did we find the right spot? We have found the right spot. Not That's only have a we nice found fish. the spot, we know where to look. 
Yeah, we know where to look. That's yeah. amazing. I, I would have bet against this happening today. I really would be out on these points because uh -huh. I thought, you know, that shows how humble they can make you, uh, right? I thought we'd be fishing in the backs most of today. Nice fish, guys. Go right back there. He sure isn't very fat. Lake Mead skinny. They're always that way. Lake Mead skinny. There's all kinds of little bushes right here. Yeah, you just missed that big that big limb. Yeah. Oops, excuse me. That and and there was no I just fish got in it. There he, there is. he is. Whoa, all I right. I got touched. That's a good fish. There he comes. There he comes. Break, baby. That's another two pounder. He's a two pound. Look how but, bright they are in that water. You can see I just see love them. them in this water. Love to see them. Come on up here and jump, big boy. He almost came Show out. Show out a little bit. Oh, he's trying to go back down. Yeah. He was fairly deep. Yeah, 15 he was. feet, maybe? About 15. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, nice fish. Nice. Nice They are bass. pretty, aren't they? They got markings. Ooh. He gobbled it up. He surely did. I think the prettiest part of that fish is that purple pork. <laughs> Don't you, Pat? There it is. I got a lot of fish today, I'm just telling you. you. I'm liking this a lot. And don't leave us, we'll be right back. Join us next week as we continue fishing the clear waters of Lake Mead with jig specialist, Jim Jarrett.